It's a good job we found that. Hey, I hate any blocks. Famous last words. Wow, that is old. I've got a real treat today. Weird things are happening. Something's not right in this. Oh my giddy on. I may not be a smart man. You can't remember everything, guys. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Artisan Electrics where I'm really sick of talking about car chargers. We're doing loads of jobs. I, this is my only car charger I've done this week and it's only what, half a day or a day. All week I've been doing fault finds, outside lighting. I've got like some interesting jobs next week. I'm up in Birmingham doing the commercial. However, I can't film that. We can only film when we have permission from the clients. And what tends to happen is our clients who find us online for EV usually are already fans of the channel and they've looked up EV, become fans of the channel, want us to film at their house. So we end up with a long list of customers saying, yeah, you can film EV. So to keep the content educational, because that is the most important thing. If it's not educational, then I might as well stop doing it now. We're going to do something a little bit different. This episode, I want to teach you, if you are new to the game, you're new to the EV game, or you're thinking of offering it to your customers, one of the most important aspects is not just the install, because as you can tell by watching the past few hundred videos, install is easy man it's a radial circuit literally 32 amp bosh into the car charger done if you can wire in a shower circuit you can pretty much wire up most of these modern chargers as long as you understand the regs surrounding it they're super easy so i want to teach you something slightly different i'm going to show you how we do an ev survey okay so when we turn up to a job how we translate that from a customer inquiry into being able to generate a quote so how I plan it out, how I decide what's going to go where. So let's get into it. Okay, so one of the first things you want to check is that all the su supply arrangements. This is probably the gas. Make sure they have gas. No, I'm gonna check that they've got bonding. Uh, do, 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 do. I don't see it in their meter cupboard. So maybe it's just as it enters the house. So it looks like it goes along there and enters in through the wall. So we'll go check their consumer unit, see what they've got. So I can see there's gas bonding just there as the cable comes in. It's annoying that it's sitting on polystyrene because that will eventually burn into that cable. So that'll be something I'll have to put onto a uh, spec sheet. You get plasticizer migration where this is the type of um, plastic, whatever it is that they use, it leaches the pl plasticizer out of the twin and earth and different cables and makes it brittle. This is a Crabtree C50 board. Wow, that is old. Yes, 5486. Like you can see here where they've had pyro cable coming in, that's how old we're talking. You've got this mineral insulated gland there, back when things were done prior. So there's not a chance that I can take a um, car charger out of that board. For a start, there's no spare ways, and also it's not going to meet any sort of modern standards, like in terms of well, RCD protection, disconnect times, and probably goodness knows what else so i can't come out of that so i'll have to present the customer two options either put in a big consume unit and consolidate all of it into one that would be my first choice if i could because i could probably tidy this up pretty sweet this i'm guessing is a sub main it's not labeled but i did see that armored cable on the outside so i presume it supplies the garage or something but looks like it's been done quite recently into a quite a reasonable standard so i'm guessing by this um because they probably would have suggested that as well um, before installing that switch fuse that they're going to want me just to add another board which if that is the case i'll just stick it here because i don't think there'll be any cables in the wall famous last words but i don't think there will be um because i can see them all surface clipped run out reference method b for bash it in that would probably be my suggestion for in here there's two spare spaces in this side this henley block so i'd probably just come straight out of that henley block into a sub consumer unit um, and then out of that consumer unit off to the hypervolt. Um, and then you could literally just, well, you could just drill it straight through really, couldn't you? Um, probably just take that little piece of polystyrene out just to make sure I'm not drilling through anything that's being clipped along and drill out wherever that's come in. Do the same thing there. So I've checked they've got mains gas bonding. I want to check they've got bonding on anything else that's needed, any other services. So you've got one for that consumer unit, one for that consumer unit one for there and presumably that one probably goes off to the water it looks a little bit undersized it's not ideal it's six mil usually as standard in england we tend to use 10 mil um, for any shorter distances of bonding and then you start as distance and potential 
increase, you then to then sort of keep that as your minimum. And there, there is a calculation for it, which I should really know before I put myself out in the public eye, but in all honesty, I actually can't remember it off the top of the head, is it like more than half the size of your conductor? Or is that your main earth? Your main earth, you use adiabatic. I can't remember. I'm gonna look that up. You can't remember everything, guys. Okay, um, so we've got our main fuse. So we've got this BS88 style fuse. That is 60 to 80 amps. So I can't open that up and check it unless the seal falls off. I might have to presume it's a 60 amp fuse if I couldn't open that up. Because if there was a main switch here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that out. And if that's the case, then I want to be careful of not overloading the supply because you've already got garage, shower, power, electric cooker by the looks of it, 30 amp cooker, and all this different stuff. So I don't really want to be adding on to that 60 amp supply too much. I can set a, uh, a grid limit on the Hypervolt and the Zappi and the Anderson. Pretty much all of them have grid limits, so that's not a problem. I'll just set that to say 55 amps, and if it starts creeping up the, the CT that will go around the main incomer here, if that starts creeping up towards 55, towards 60 amps, it will just ramp down the charge to balance it out so you don't blow the main fuse. Cool, 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 Leo. Sparky's paradise. Let's go outside and see if we can find some water bonding. It's big for these guys. Okay, so that's pretty much all the information I need now. The gas bond I can confirm visually, the water bond I'm going to confirm with testing because I can't actually see it because there's no main stopcock in the house. The main stopcock is out in the street. So I want to do it as it enters the house. The trouble is I can't really find where it enters the house. I've, I've pulled apart as much as I can underneath the boiler where you would presume that the water might come in. I've checked underneath the sink where it might come in, but I can't see it. So it might be inside one of the bathrooms or something. Um, so I'm just going to test it because there is a cable there, so I'll just pull them out one at a time and see if I can test it to the pipe work. And if I get a good reading, then I'm satisfied that that is bonded somewhere. So I just need my MPAN number off the meter, meter point access number, and they're all things that will go on the OLEV grant paperwork. That's it. That is the EV survey. It's super easy. It's, it's a lot of people, I think, getting a, a fiddle with it because it's something that's new. So they think it's going to be complicated. There's going to be a load of hidden things like about it that is going to trip them up there's nothing there to trip you up it's seriously easy just imagine you're quoting any normal job you're pricing your time so i estimate for this as really i'm going to allow a day because it might only take me four to six working hours um, but then once you factor in the testing and the, the paperwork and that side of it and also the travel what other jobs am i going to be able to squeeze into this this is quite a distance i'm down in london so what other jobs am I really going to fit into this? Um, so I'm going to allow a day, so that'll be eight hours. So what you need to do is whatever you charge in your area for, for however many hours that you've allowed for the job, what you want divided by however many hours, I guess, and then price up your materials, which in this case would just be about six metres of EV Ultra cable, because you've got to allow for the CT, don't forget, on your um, hypervolts, and that little sub-main board. Easy stuff, guys. And the thing is, as well, you don't actually have to be here in person. You can do it all over FaceTime if you wanted to, or Zoom or Skype or whatever, anything. As long as they've got a handheld device with a camera, they could show you around the job. Personally, I think it's better if you can get onto site because you're then going to have that customer interaction and they can get used to you, build confidence in you, and you can get hands on. Sometimes trying to explain to a customer where to find their MPAN number on their electricity bill or what bonding is and why they need it and how to find it on the pipe. It's easier sometimes just to get down there and you can even price that time into your job. So say you're allowing eight hours, perhaps allow 10 hours on your quotes, that if you get the job, you've then covered yourself for two hours coming out here, checking over all the work. We have actually already specced up this job. We've already provided a quotation. The customer has accepted it. So I'm, I'm actually here to do the install. We're gonna do a quick install and then we'll cut to after the install and I'll show you how I wrap up all the paperwork and things as well because that's something else that seems to be tripping people up. So hopefully then that is somewhat educational. Enjoy. Hypervolt, come on man. Where's our cardboard template gone? I asked them for a cardboard template and we got a cardboard template but now for some reason the cardboard template has disappeared. I don't know why. Hypervolt, if you're watching this, please bring back the template, we liked it. I've got a real treat today. I've got myself some Hoover bags because I keep forgetting to buy them. And as you can see, I've been a real cheapskate. I don't know if anyone else does this trick. Maybe it's genius, 
or maybe it's really messed up. Man, my clothes smell of fabric softener, it's lovely. Um, it's the old cut the corner off and then zip tie it back together trick just to empty the bag out and keep reusing it. And this thing, I mean, it's been used so much. I've probably, I've probably emptied this bag about five times because I was doing garden lights yesterday and I had to like dig out to try and find the conduit. So I was just using my hoover as like a shovel because it was so sandy and gritty. I was using my hoover, emptying the bag out on the side, using my hoover, emptying it out. And then when I wanted to backfill it, I just emptied the bag directly back into the hole and it worked a treat, but I've actually got some bags now. So I may not be a smart man. For a simple man like me, this is all you need to be excited. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. Yeah, you Henry, you're welcome. Right, I can't decide how I'm gonna make this look neat because I wanted to come out there next to that, next to that cable and then just swoop down and go off. But this pipe, I don't wanna jump over it, it's gonna look rubbish. So I think I'm actually gonna bring it into the building here. I'll still be inside that same cupboard and then I'll just run it behind or run it on the floor along and pop it up or something like that. So I think I'm actually gonna drill it through there instead because then I can just run it straight along instead of jumping over and making it all look rubbish. Customer has very kindly made us some cake, so. of another way that this episode might be useful and educational rather than purely entertaining because as much as I like it to be entertaining I'm an electrician first I'm not a performing monkey although I do like peanuts and I love the sweet juicy potassium that bananas provide so if you're in a situation where your customer wants you to add things whether it be new sockets new circuits this out or the other Obviously the ideal circumstance would be to replace the consumer unit and start again if it doesn't meet regs. But say you want to put in a garden circuit and there's no RCD and you say, well, you have to replace your consumer unit, etc., etc. But that means I then need to do an inspection on the whole house and then change this and then change that. And it can ladder up into a lot of work before you know it plus the quote. It can be an option to present the client two options, maybe a price to do all of that. And then another price to come in separately. So here I've just got a little two-way board with a type A RCD main switch, which I always find easier personally to wire up before I mount because it can be really fiddly. So I'm gonna get it all wired, get it all in, then mount it and then dress the cables in. It's just the way I like to do it. But that is a way around to doing it. And what you do is you use something called a Henley block. So a Henley block, it's like a junction box, but for the mains tails. So you can see it comes out of the meter here inside this little box here. So this is called the Henley block. I don't know, I think that's actually a brand name, but like Hoover. Yeah, that's what they kind of just, that's what they're called, basically a 100 amp junction box. Um, and then that splits the supply off in whatever which way you want to take it. So I'm gonna come into that, because there's already two spare ways there. So I'm gonna come into that into my, my little sub main. I'm gonna try and leave enough slack, although it won't look as neat. I think if I explain the reasons my customer, they'll be cool, but I'm gonna try and leave a bit of slack pushed back so that when they do have this consumer unit replaced, because it's a matter of time really, isn't it? Let's face it. When they do have that replaced, they can just pull that slack back through and get it all up into the main consumer unit and get rid of the one I'm installing now and reuse it somewhere else maybe and not have to join the cable. I don't think this house is old enough to have proper use of pyro inside of it. And I don't see any evidence of pyro anywhere else. And also the labeling in this board doesn't match up at all with the labels in the house. 
So the customer said they don't have a shower or an electric cooker. They don't have the garage powered there. Obviously the garage powered there and it never was. So I reckon this was installed somewhere else and this was the tenanted property. So potentially they might have, the builder or electrician, whoever it was that installed this, might have ripped it out of another job and stuck it in here um, because it just doesn't really marry up to the property or the age of the wiring. I could be miles out, but interesting theory, isn't it? Hopefully that's useful for you. Anyways, that's quite fun. It's the little things in life, having your hilti, having your drill match your hole saw. Nice. So you see these raw plugs here. I'm not sure 100%, I should probably not be touching them, especially not on camera, but I have a feeling that they could well be asbestos. What they used to do is they'd have it inside a little tin. You'd mush it up with your spit, you'd chew it up, and then push it into the wall and screw a screw into it. And that was seriously how raw plugs used to be. Look it up, old asbestos raw plugs. Interesting. I'm not gonna disturb it or touch it. So, I've got the Henley block out and ready. Oh man, I hate Henley blocks. They're like my least favorite thing to do, just because you don't want to get them wrong, because if you get them wrong, I have safely isolated by the way, you just can't ask how, but we're safely isolated, fear not. Oh, by the way, I broke the Henley block. I was just being a little bit too aggressive with it and the crust, the, the crustic plaked, the plastic cracked. Still, I've still got these on. <laughs> just went and got a new Henley block. And while I was in the van, I also grabbed the Kit Kat. I don't know who sent these to the office, but they are good quality hit, um, hit cats. Oh my days. <laughs> what is the matter with me today? They are really good quality. If you've got any batches from that uh, go out of date on the, 04 2022 you're gonna get them they hit different they're good quality someone has sent me a whole ton to the office address of Kit Kats, and i don't know who it is like they've not put any name they've not put any return address so i can only guess it's a mysterious viewer after that little Kit Kat segment but mate thank you very much whoever you are i've not checked them for any traces of anything so like if they have got roofies in them or something then well i guess the only one way to find out is to see how this episode finishes. It's good. Tool of the day, this little pocket light from Uni Light. I love it. I've got it just because it fits in my little trouser pockets here. Everyone was slating Jordan for being a terrible human being and a terrible boss because I'm always using my phone torch. And I agree, making your employees use their phone torch instead of walking to the van to get their Uni Light does make you a terrible human being. But you know, I'm stuck with him, he's my employer, so. But he's, he's redeemed himself. He bought this for me, which, well, I say he bought it from me. I picked it up from CEF and I said to him, oh, I've picked this up from CEF so I can save on the VAT. Just take the money out of my wages or I'll transfer it to you. And he very kindly, this, I'm going back months now, this is ages ago. And he said, no, it's fine. I'll get it, my treat. Because he's actually a beautiful human being, despite what he'd look like on face value. So yeah, that's my tool of the day because it's pretty sick. I just like keeping it in my pocket. And trouble is I always forget to charge it. That's why I always end up using my phone torch for everything. But when I can, I use this because it's really small, folds up. I can stick it in my pocket in there with my little fluke and all the rest of it. And there's loads of different settings. I'm always blinding myself with it. That's the thing. Cause I'm like, oh, which, which setting is it? Is it, blah, and then before you know it, I mean, look at that, dear me just captured the power of the sun in a little 10 centimeter stick. And it's got a magnet. I think it's got another one there as well. Oh, look at that. I mean, you know you want it. I want it. I'm not, I, I swear to you, I'm getting no commission on this sale. It's just pure me, basically. Come by yourself, this naughty little lamp. Something's not right in this. So I've not touched any of this. And the whole point being of doing a Henley block is so that I don't have to touch anything because I don't want to be responsible for it. However, when I move that, weird things are happening and there was a spark inside here. I mean, oh goodness. I don't know what's the lesser of the two evils, massively over tightening it like that to the point where it all starts to bubble up or having it too loose. But 
Just want to double check all of this is definitely tight. There's no sign of damage or anything. That all seems to be okay, live and neutral. Yeah, live and neutral. Oh, we're going to have to take this consume unit off, aren't we? Didn't want to do that. Let's take this off and see what's inside. I really didn't want to even look in here. I'll take any. Oh my kitty aunt. Oh. <laughs> I really, really didn't want to look in here because I was like, look, I've told him you need an inspection. I don't want to take any responsibility for this install. If Unless I'm replacing it, I want nothing to do with it. We'll come back and do a proper inspection, but I'm not going to start fiddling, fixing little bits because you know what will happen. It'll be a can of worms. As soon as you touch one thing, it will just be issue after issue after issue. And then you're responsible for it because you're the last guy to touch it. Um, but I've not touched anything, but then just moving them tails there, I was like, hang on a minute, the lights are flickering. I honestly have not, well, you can see, I've not put a screwdriver to that yet. I've literally not touched it because I can't until I take that off anyways. Mate, that was, that was literally touching the terminal. I was going to say, I'm amazed there's no sign of heat buildup. There is a sign of heat buildup. Um, not on the copper, incredibly, but on the actual, um, on the actual terminal there. You can see where it's got quite hot, but oh dear me, geez Louise, that's crazy. That wasn't even at all tight. So how that's like, they're, they're, yeah, they're lucky that's not giving them worst issues because the only protection on that cable there is the BS88 fuse, which is not going to be easy to, to blow. I have had to pull the main fuse, I'm going to be honest because as soon as I saw that flickering and them issues, I was like, oh my goodness, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna have that fuse blow while I'm sitting inside a little cupboard. I didn't really give it a proper tug, but if I'd have given that a tug, that probably would have come straight out, touched that earth board, and oh my goodness, that would have probably scared the likes of uh, Max, who wouldn't have scared me, because nothing scares me, other than the inevitable marching of time. Um, but yeah, that, that would have been pretty horrendous and that would have blown that main fuse and probably also wrecked my trousers. It's a good job we found that, hey. There we go. Oh, crisis averted, no flickering lights and death by electrocution. The stuff you find in domestic properties is just shocking especially this it was attended we work for some incredible landlords who aren't like this i'm not tiring them all with the same brush we work for some landlords who are extremely generous and will literally go above and beyond if we say our oh, ideally this would be safer then they'll almost always go for it and do whatever they think is the safest option so i'm not tiring them all with the same brush but in general in the private sector landlords psls and certainly in the council as well, although they are slightly more accountable. The workmanship is just shocking and it's because cheap labour is out there, people will go for the cheapest quote and you end up with things like that and you end up with tenants being cooked in their beds because there's a house fire. So it's serious, it is serious and it's something like that needs to be sorted but I think unfortunately until someone really really important, I mean every life is important but it's someone really important dies, I don't think anything will be done. I think the electrical regs and all the um, mess that the industry's in will unfortunately stay that way until, until that happens. Okay guys, so the job is finished. And as I promised, I'm trying to avoid making this one just about the car chargers because I feel like if you want to learn how to install a Hypervolt, you can just go through all of our older videos and learn how to install a Hypervolt. Charger's installed. I really want to get rid of all those cables, but they're all sky cables, so I can't really be getting rid of that right now. Let the cameraman pan past the door number. So we've run it along, clipped it in, standard, standard, standard. So what I think we'll do next is focus on EV Comply for those people that have DM'd me, DM Jordan, left comments in the videos asking, how do I do the notifications? Do I need to be trained on every single charger? Do I need this? Do I need that? We're just gonna try and answer those questions for you guys, because ultimately, without you viewers, there's literally no point in us doing these videos. So if there's anything else you want to know or any other questions you have, 
and just stick it in the comments below so at least it's enjoyable for you and it's not just another car charger video. So anyway, that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been useful to you somehow and uh, let us know what you'd like to see in the next one. See you in the next time.